Okay, this is an original effect that I call the Australian 21 card trick. I also refer to it as the Australian lie detector test. Okay, so what you need for this is you ask the spectator to choose any 21 cards and to mix them as much as they like. Have them gather up the cards and hand them to you. Now, what you need to do as the performer Without looking, show the spectator the identity of the bottom card. This is their special card. Okay. From here, you tell the spectator that you're going to input their first name into the lie detector machine. So, what's your first name? David? Okay. D-A-V-I-D. Okay, David. We're now going to run the truth telling program. Okay. T R U T H. Okay, David. So what card did you see? The Jack of Hearts? Are you sure? Okay. J A C K O F H E A R T S. Okay, David, we're going to go ahead and process your answer. T R U T H. Okay, well, let's see how you did, David. D A V I D. You lied, my friend. Okay, so let's take a look at this effect and why it works, okay? And if you um, follow the instructions as given, this will always work for you. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so on the left-hand side of the screen, I have a complete write-up of this effect, and it even gives you the restrictions on how many letters are required for the person's first name. Uh, they need to have somewhere between 2 to 11 letters in their first name. Now, if they have more than that, it may still work. It will depend on the particular card name that they give. But it's guaranteed to work as long as their first name has between 2 and 11 letters. Okay, And so in this write-up, I give you even the wording that you can use to perform this. And so with this document, you should be able to perform this within just a matter of minutes. Okay, And so once again, I'll have a link in the description below that will allow you to download this as a PDF. I thought we would also take a very quick look at the mathematical proof as to why this thing works. Okay, so if you've looked at other videos on my channel in which I use what are called B brackets, these are the square brackets, to represent packets of cards, uh, you'll probably have an easier time following this, but I think really anyone can follow this. It's, it's simple enough that with a little bit of explanation, I think you'll see, oh, okay, I can see exactly how this works, okay? So what I have here to keep things straight, I've used the letter F to represent the number of letters in the person's first name. And then I've used C to represent the number of letters in the given card name that the spectator gives. And then T represents the number of cards transferred to the bottom for the truth telling program. And then the packet size is 21 cards, okay? And so here are the restrictions. Uh, we need F to fall between 2 and 11. So between 2 and 11 letters in their first name. Um, if you think about it, the shortest of the card names have 10 letters in them, and the longest card names have 15. So C will stay within the range 10 to 15. And then if you actually transfer the cards for spelling out truth that we did for the truth telling program, a total of nine cards as you do T, R, U, and then you're transferring cards underneath, right? Okay, so for those who have a bit of mathematics under their belt, um, they will likely know that in this case, it's sufficient to check the boundary cases. 
for us to verify that this will always work. Well, the boundary cases would be when f is equal to 2 or 11 and c is equal to 10 or 15. And of course, t is always 9, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so here are the four boundary cases, and they come in pairs, okay, which will make things simpler. Okay, so on the one extreme, let's say the person's first name only has two letters. Like if their name's Ty, you know, T-Y, you know, they go with the abbreviation of Tyler, let's say. That would still work, okay? So they have two letters in their first name, and the card that they give or claim is the card that they saw is one of the cards that has the shortest names possible, namely 10 letters. Okay, so what happens in this case? Okay, well, here are these brackets I mentioned. So how you read this is we have 20 cards followed by the bottom card, right? The card of interest, the special card that the spectator has noted. And so the numbers within the bracket always need to add up to the packet size, which is 21 here, okay? So if we spell out the two letters in their first name, two of the top cards here will be moved to the bottom. So 20 gets knocked down by two, so it's 18. And then we have the two cards written right here, down below the spectator's special card. Now for the truth telling program, when we spell out truth, we actually transfer nine cards from the top to the bottom. Well, if you subtract nine from 18, you're left with nine. And then if we add nine to two, we get 11. Okay, and now if we're assuming the shortest of the card names, namely 10 letters, that means that we will move the top 10 cards to the bottom and they get reversed in order, right? So we'll not only move these nine cards here, but we'll move one more, which is the special card. And then all of the remaining cards are dropped on top. So essentially what it does is it reverses all of these little values in here. Okay, so we'll have 11, followed by their special card, followed by nine cards. At this point, if we now process their answer by spelling out truth, that moves nine of these 11 cards to the bottom. You'll get two on top and 18 on the bottom. And at this point, we just spell out their first name again, which has two letters. So these two cards right here get moved to the bottom. And so now their special card has risen to the top, okay? Um, now, the second case right here, if you actually look at what's inside the brackets, it's identical to the first case, okay? And that's for the simple reason that right here where we had 10 cards and now we have 15, it's not going to change the outcome from the previous step. We'll still have 11 cards followed by the spectator's card followed by nine cards. Okay, so the third boundary case here is where we're assuming the spectator has 11 letters in their first name and the card they state only has 10. So how this would work then is the 20 cards on top above the spectator's card, 11 of them would move to the bottom, leaving us with nine on top. Now, if we perform the truth-telling program by moving nine cards from the top here to the bottom, that means these nine cards are now going to be on the bottom. That brings the spectator's special card to the top. From here, if the card they state has 10 letters, then what that will do is it'll move the top card here to the bottom, and then it will transfer nine of these on top of the spectator's card and dropping the rest on top. So really all that does is it just switches these two values. That's really what it does. And then from here, if we process their answer by transferring nine from the top to the bottom, we're left with 11 on top, nine on the bottom, and that 11 now is exactly the number of letters in their first name so that when they spell that, their special card yet again rises to the top, okay? And then the final case, in terms of the packet structure along the way, it's identical. You'll get exactly the same representation as I've written here, okay? So you, you will again bring their special card to the top, okay? So that's just kind of a quick confirmation of the boundary cases. And once again, in this particular situation, that verifies it for all values in the range of values that we've given up here. 
and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.